All right. So you can see my screen, right? The PowerPoint slide that I gave you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this yes. section is about Zoom functions that are required for online contests. You may be um, in another event where you use Zoom, and some of these may or may not apply to what you're doing currently. Okay. I will also focus on the best practices to facilitate contests, especially for Toastmasters contests. It's all geared towards Toastmasters contest, um, contest. First of all, before you start, you want to make sure that you download your Zoom client to your desktop. And it looks something like this. OK, and with it, when you see my screen here, you notice that I'm using the, my sign-in ID has TLI Dean because this account was given to me by the district, by district 29. And from there, you can also see what, what is your latest update. You wanna make sure that you check for updates here. Check for updates and you notice that I am done the latest update, which is 5.93. Okay, that's what you wanna do because Zoom is constantly updating their features and they are always enhancing it based on the feedback from their users. That's what I mean when I say that you make sure you have the latest Zoom version. The second, the next thing you wanna understand is understand your audience. Back when it was 2020, when we first went online, a lot of people were not familiar with having a contest on Zoom and having virtual meetings. So at that time, a lot of people had a difficult time as well. Where is the button for this and where is the button for that? It looks like we are way past that at this point. And so you have to understand by understanding your audience, some of the audience now are very mixed. Some are very experienced in virtual, some are not. So you wanna sometimes like zoom in on people who are not comfortable with technology and help them out. Make sure you have the contest cast before the dry run. What I mean by that is your, the, the people whom you are doing the Zoom hosting for should have given you a list of who is going to be what, who are the judges behind the scene. Okay, make sure you have that because that is handy. I'm showing to you an old sample one that I used to use. And this has all the contestants. You notice how I named them by this, and we'll go through that in a little while, all right? You notice also that I have a, a model speaker for evaluation speeches, for example, ES means evaluation. And you notice that I have um, area directors listed here, and these are all my cheat sheets. In down here too, I also have who are the division directors that I know who will be attending the meeting so that I can rename them. And then I have a whole host of people who will be running the contest. Notice I have, I know who are the chief judges behind this, who, who is the chief judge behind the scene, the timer, ballot counter. Typically for virtual meetings, it's better to have two ballot counters instead of one. It's also better to have two timers instead of one and two sergeant at arms instead of one. And then it is just a reminder for myself whether I sent them the Zoom information or not. So you can use this as a cheat sheet for yourself as a Zoom host. The next thing I want to show you is I even know who are the judges, who's a tiebreaker judge, for example, and who are the dignitaries that will be coming and attending the meeting. And I rename them with a, an, a star. And that's because the reason why I rename them with pound and a star is because that's how Zoom organizes your, your participants. They list every, all the participants by the pound sign. That's why if I have pound area, area 61, for example, I can easily find these people as far as participants. And that's why I name them this way. So that it's, it's easy for me when I do a breakout meeting, to be able to find these participants. And then as people come into the meeting, as your um, cast comes into the meeting, I behind the scene would start highlighting them. For example, David Matthews has arrived, Morali has arrived, 
and eventually a whole lot of people would arrive and then you have just one person who didn't show up, for example, all right? And by virtue of highlighting these people, you know who are in, who are out, who's absent and who the contest master or the contest coordinator should call to remind them that, hey, you're late for the meeting, all right? So this is what I mean by the contest cast on this, on this sheet. Make sure you have that before your dry run so that you're well prepared. Because by the time you do the dry run, you don't want to go, go in and ask, hey, who is your chief judge? Who are, who are the, the cast members? That by then it's a bit too late and too disruptive. You also want to work with your area and division directors to make sure that the contestants and officials attend the dry run. Why is this important? This is because during the dry run, you kind of have a feel for who is comfortable with technology, who is not. And this shouldn't be their first time attending your, your contest when the contest is on. That should have been the second time. When they attend your dry run, they will understand and, ex and know the expectation of what they need to do during the dry run. That is why it's very important, even if they tell you that, hey, I've attended a dry run, I'm a very seasoned contest, master or I'm a very seasoned con, uh, judge, they should at least attend the dry run, if at all. Of course, as a judge, the chief judge is responsible for making sure that they attend the dry run. And also overall for the uh, contest, the contest coordinator is responsible for making sure that everyone attends the dry run. So if in my case, I usually would touch bases with the area and division directors to ask them to make sure that people attend the dry run. It is really important. And then the next thing is coordinate with your host or co-host -host on Zoom responsibilities. Typically for any co uh, contest, you will have a host or a co-host. The host do certain things and the co-host would do certain things. I'll give you an example. If you are a host, th there will be a high probability that you will be doing what we call as the breakup rooms. And if you're a co-host, for example, you could be responsible for admitting people into the contest when they're in, in the waiting room. So you can divide and conquer as far as, as roles and responsibilities. All right, any questions there before I move on? All right, key account settings. What I mean by that is when you are setting up your Zoom, let's just say that um, you may or may not have your, let me just find where my Zoom setting is. Does this all make sense to you all? Yes. Okay. Remember, this is interactive. I. It's important for me that Yes, Martin. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm taking so notes I'm, at the same time you're talking. That's good. So I am showing you my entire screen again. And on this uh, desktop here, I just click zoom.us, all right? If this is your own Zoom account, you will be able to come up to here, go to your own account. And you notice that I'm still on the TLI Dean account that the district gave me, you can come into settings here. Now, if you don't have your own account and they're using district's account, chances are it's already set up for you to do some of the things that you will need. And if you have your own account, settings is where you wanna go, where you will see that you can configure your Zoom so that you have the waiting room on. So it's always important to have your waiting room on because you never know who is going to attend your meeting. And then you can also see that if you notice some of these things, for me on my Zoom account, I didn't enable the meeting password, which is why for me, the waiting room will always be on. But this is an option, as you can see, it's optional, all right? And some of the other things that I put on my PowerPoint is what you can configure here as well, all right? 
this is is this means that when people come into your link and if they just click your link it will enable them to join without them having to put in the meeting id and password and this is enabled as well one very important feature that i find very helpful is this one mute all participants when they join a meeting because you you don't want any noise or disruption another one that is very important to make sure that um, you have is sound notification when someone joins or leave the meeting because as a host and co-host if someone joins your meeting and it's in the middle of a contested speaking you don't want to admit them immediately, even though you know that they're there. And then, sometimes, and then sometimes you are so absorbed in what you're doing, you may not know that someone joined, which is why the host, the Zoom, Zoom will give you a ding so that you know that somebody is coming into your meeting. So this I find very, very helpful and, and it um, tremendously keeps me on my feet. Because sometimes you could, you know, go to your kitchen to get to get a glass of water or something. And because I have my earpiece here, I use my I use my earpiece and I can hear what's going on behind the scene. So when you're Zoom host, it's always good to have an earpiece if you can. If not, sometimes I bring my computer or laptop with me to make sure that I am aware of everything that's going on in the Zoom um, in the Zoom. Uh, in, in the contest. If not, you can also text your Zoom host, a co-host, and let them know that you're going to walk away for two minutes and for them to um, do your duty for you, for example, as needed. All right. So that that is what I mean when I say that your account setting, make sure that all of these account settings um, are enabled. All right. I'm going to move on now. The next thing I want to show you is how to rename contestants. So for example, I'm going to show you my contestant, your, my participant list. So in your menu bar at the bottom of your Zoom, you can also click participants and you will see the participant list like this. And then I can easily rename myself to, for example, rename myself to Pound, evaluation speaker, and then Margaret Huan, for example. And I do the rename like this. When I do pound, then Zoom will list everyone um, by order of the pound or the asterisk that you have. So it's important that you rename people, for example, um, as far as uh, what, what, as far as their role. For an, another example I want to give you is also it's very important for you to, for example, um, to rename some of these cast members. Okay, make sure that they're all renamed, like contest master, for example, the timer, so that when you start picking people and moving them to the breakout room, then it's easier for you to see by virtue of looking at the participant list. So always important to do that, to rename your, your participant. Which attendees should not be renamed, right? So if I am a judge, for all the judges that has been designated for that um, area contest, club contest, or division contest, you should not highlight them or bring them up into the picture or should not ask them any question as far as giving them away. For example, if Michelle is a judge in my contest, I shouldn't be telling her, asking her, hey, Michelle, aren't you going to the judge's room yet? Oh. <laughs> that would give her away as a judge, all right? So when a person is a judge, you don't wanna rename them. You don't wanna do anything with them. You don't wanna highlight them. Just let them be like part of the participant. Audio and video systems check. So as a Zoom host, when you are at the dry run, what you want to do is help your contestants um, make sure that their video is working properly, help them test their audio, for example. If let's just say they're coming to the room early 
even if they come into the room early, it's never too late. I mean, it's never too early to ask them, hey, Michelle, would you like to test your audio or your video and have them turn on their video so that they can see, make sure that the video fits all of the, what they want the participants to see. All right. Sometimes for their, um, for some of the contestants, they may want to stand up, they may want to move backwards or whatever it is, you want to make sure that they, they have the opportunity to test their audio and their video setting. Uploading agenda to the chat. Make sure also that you have the sergeant at arms or, uh, or, or somebody from the contest. Or con Most of the time it's the sergeant at arms who would upload agenda to the chat. And if they forget, you can just remind them. Now, by now, a lot of the Toastmasters participants or, or members already know what is gallery view versus speaker view. So for con contests, we typically advise the, uh, the contestants to put themselves on gallery view if they haven't done so already. You guys know what is gallery view and speaker views, right? On the right hand side of your screen, there is something that says the view. If you click that, you have an option to see whether it's speaker view or gallery view. Oh, right, right, okay, right. yeah, got it. Right, got it. So, if the difference here is that if it's a speaker view, you only see the one the person who is speaking, and that's not going to do the contestant any good because the contestant needs to look at the timer. So generally, we ask the contestants to put themselves on gallery view. In gallery view, when everybody turned off the video during a contest, only the timer and the contestant would be visible. And that way they can see the timer, the, the, the timer and, and know when to stop talking, when is the green light, when is the yellow light, and when is the red light. In the beginning, we asked people to use pin feature now we don't encourage pin feature for, uh, for speakers, for contestants, because we find that for most of them, gallery view works the best. You can also test it out with them to see if they wanna use a pin view, but most of the time, so far, the gallery view has worked for a lot of people. All right. Co-host now can also, do, so you, when you are a host or a co-host, you can do most things that the host can, the Zoom host can do, except for example, creating meeting, um, create edit or create or edit the polls, assign co-host and rename Zoom host, all right? So when it comes to poll, and if you are the owner of the, if you are the owner of the Zoom link, there is also an ability for you to set up this, the poll when you're like this. For example, for example, I could come up here. And look at my meetings. And I'll, I'll show you what I have done behind the scene as well for today's meeting. Actually, I had, I had, uh, well, I don't know if they'll allow me to show you what I've done in terms of the poll, but the poll can be configured in the setting as well. When you click this and you do edit, all right, because I'm using the Zoom, Zoom link right now, a proxy, the edit is disabled. If you click edit here, then you can add the poll as needed. All right, that's how you access your poll. All right. I'm gonna assume that you have no other questions and I'm gonna move on. Managing attendees, the waiting room function. So I, um, when during the contest, when a contestant is speaking, you notice that some people would come in late. And for people that are coming in late, there is that waiting room and you can send a message to the waiting room, the people in the waiting room, to let them know that a contestant is speaking and we will let, it, let you in 
when the speaker has finished speaking. And also has Zoom Master, when you are conducting the contest, typically the waiting room will always be on. It is good that it's on because it will tell you it, to, who's coming in and who is leaving. Well, actually it will tell you just who is uh, present, who is coming in. If you look at, because you are a co-host now, if you look at the button at the bottom of your bar, of your Zoom bar, click the button that says security. Can you see security? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you notice that I enabled the waiting room. Okay. You also notice that I enabled the share screen. I, I let everyone oh. chat. Yeah. And you can even tell people to rename themselves because I gave, you know, typically we give them that capability. We also um, give them the ability to mute or un unmute themselves, all right? Now, just remember that if you mute somebody during a contest, typically you have to unmute them or click so that you can unmute them and Zoom will ask them permission to, un to be unmuted. This is because this mm -hmm. comes in handy because sometimes people may forget to um, uh, turn off their, their audio and then you hear a lot of noise in the background mm -hmm. and has Zoom Master, you can mute them as well. All right? Gotcha. Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. notice the button that says remove participant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the event that somebody comes into your room being very disruptive. Now, I personally, even though I've done a lot of the Zoom hosting within uh, Toast, Toastmasters contests and meetings, I haven't had the great opportunity of having, having people Zoom or, or Zoom bomb my meeting, which is a good thing because you don't want that. But I have heard of other people where they had a Zoom bomb. Uh, somebody came in and showed very disruptive uh, pictures and, and make a lot of noise and and they're very smart because they would rename themselves as somebody, all right? So it's always good for you to be aware of who's coming into your room. Because once they rename yourself, you know, you could have two Margaret Juan, for example, and you don't know which one to, 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 to remove, but then you would know also by virtue of the fact that you're a Zoom host, that you know who is talking, who is not, who is showing screen, and you can remove that participant. So that button comes in very handy and you should always remember the button is there when you need it. All right. Cool. So, yeah, <laughs> all that okay. power that you have, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And then participant list, we talked about the shorting method, method I'm sorry, um, and, and the naming convention. We talked about mm -hmm. participant control, all right? How you can um, uh, control, know. yeah. And then the viewing method and how you can hide and then hide non-video participants. So sometimes people forget that to hide their video and many a times they do do that. So you can easily, you know, you can easily also do it here and you can, oh, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, you can also do that here. That's right. another way for you to do it, right? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, these controls come in very handy during the meeting. Yeah. Right, right. You That's why it, oh, it gives you a lot of leverage. <laughs> oh, there's a rename. Okay. Yeah, the rename button. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here's the mute button that I had to use a little while ago because somebody forgot to mute themselves. All right. And then we talked about gallery view versus speaker view. All right. Allow contestants to record, ha, huh? okay. So because you are a uh, co-host, you can see another button there that says pause, stop recording. Sometimes, yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the participants want to record themselves. So because I'm recording now, you won't be able to see the feature. But if you are a Zoom host, you will be able to see that for example, you can allow people to record themselves. And this is another way to, um, to, rec to, to, to record themselves. If you, look at, um, if you look at your Zoom 
link with all the gallery view. And on the right hand side, you see the three dots. Yes. Right? Yeah. And if you click the three dots, that that one of the feature is also to allow the member or the person to record themselves. And and when they do that, um, sometimes they will forget to to fin finish, you know, like finish recording. They they will forget to stop a recording. You just have to remind them. So that's another thing you want to ask as a Zoom host at the dry run. Who wants to record themselves? You notice that all the questions I have is for me to prepare myself. <laughs> okay. Because I'm a kind of person, I don't like last minute. It makes me nervous. And when I'm nervous, I forgot where things are. So I like to ask these things ahead of time so that I don't have to figure things out. They call it making it dummy proof, right? Yeah. Um, contest cast, we talked about a little while ago, we talked about renaming people. That's another important feature, all right? Yeah. Gonna take this out. The next thing is about managing breakout rooms. All right, so I am going to show you how I am going to do the breakout room, all right? So for example, now, I also want to let you know that, I also want to let you know that Zoom has modified this feature tremendously so that it is more user friendly than before. The first time I click the breakout room, it looks like this. And you as co-host have access to that breakout room as well. First of all, when I'm in a contest, I know automatically that I need at least three rooms, but it doesn't hurt for me to do additional rooms because I may delete one room. And then I, I now have the capability to add additional rooms when all the rooms are open, all right? Assign automatically, I have used that, features, that feature only once because typically I want to assign manually. The system is not going to know who's gonna do what. You would use assign automatically when you are in, let's just say a district, uh, a seminar or something where people um, just want to go from room to room, all right? So I, in this case for contest, you would assign manually. And typically I don't let participants choose rooms. You do that only when, like I, um, like I just mentioned, when you're in a district conference or some kind of conference, people can get in and out anytime they want. And this is the way you let participants choose rooms, all right? For contests, I typically assign manually. So I am going to create the breakout room and it looks like this. All right, it looks like this. And what the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do contestants, all right? This is a contestant room where, where I am going to put the, all the contestants into that room. And you will always need a judge's room. Okay. Now, the reason why I have some of these other ones is because sometimes somebody comes in late and the judge's room is closed and the judge wants to, to talk to the person on a one-on-one -on -one basis, then you can just, even, even if you don't rename them, it's fine. You can assign assigned it you know, to, to the two people who wants to have a personal conversation. You can do that as well. So it doesn't hurt, all right, to have more, more um, breakout rooms. You notice that when I click assign, both of it, your names comes in, all right? And that's because you, right now we only have two participants, even though you guys are co-hosts. And has a, a Zoom host, you actually can go from room to room if you want to. So when you start assigning people, if, when you're in a contest, you will see a list of all your contestants here, all everyone who are here in your meeting. And then you can drag and drop, drag and drop people into the, the appropriate rooms. Okay, assign them. And then you notice also that if I were to come in here and I delete one room, See, delete room three, I say yes, delete room three. 
I can also root at another room. It used to be that Zoom would not let you add rooms if you are currently using the breakout room, but now the feature is more user-friendly. So this is how you would assign a breakout room. And this is for judges briefing, this is for contestant briefing, and this is, could be for anything else that your contest needs. Does that make sense? Yes, it's much more powerful than it used to be. Yes. Which right. is really right. good. Yeah. And now the added feature here is, you see how it says open all room? So after you assign the individuals to the rooms, it, it won't open up the room until you click open all rooms. Once you open all rooms, all the people that you assigned here will go into the room, all right? Now you have to think carefully now because let's just say, let's pretend, okay? During the dry run, everybody has already done the briefing. During the contest, everybody has already dry, finished their contest. During the contest, what you, and people evaluator, like um, the contestant one, two, and three had already finished. And there are only four and five, contestant four and five here. So behind the scene, what you want to do is pick them off the contestant room. That's because the next time you open the room for all the judges, the rooms will be open to all the judges and all the judges will be taken to that room unintentionally. So that's why as a Zoom host, you have to be very, um, very, uh, what they call this, uh, attentive to when all the during the contest, when all the judges are done with all their briefing, and let's just say the judges say that, hey, I, we don't need to meet anymore until we come back and count the ballot, all right? So at that point, I would take them off from the judges' room because when I open all the rooms for contestants, that means that all these rooms we've opened and all the judges will be taken to their rooms unintentionally. One day, you know, maybe Zoom will come up with a feature that says that you can open each of these rooms one by one. But for now, once you open all the rooms, all that means every one that you assign would all be assigned, uh, would all be taken to their rooms. It used to be that once upon a time, when you open all the rooms, all the, 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 the people that you assign have to click something to say, yes, I'm going, yes, take me to the room. Yes, take me to the room. Yes, take me to the room. Now, Zoom has enhanced it so that as soon as you open all the rooms, the people are taken automatically to the rooms without them going, I didn't see the button. Where is that button? We used to get a lot of that. So those are some of the enhancements that Zoom had done. All right. Yeah. You can also choose to make changes in the middle, but that's, I, I, I like to be very calculated and, and I like to be, I, I like to know ahead of time what I'm doing, especially when it comes to breakout rooms, all right? Another thing with breakout rooms is that, um, let's just say that um, in an evaluation contest, for example, and evaluator number one has just finished. So you has a contestant, uh, you has a Zoom host, you will have the ability here, there is another win, uh, there is another button here that you will see when people are in the breakout room for you to send broadcast messages. That means that when you send a broadcast message, people in all the breakout rooms would see your message. That way, they know to bring in contestant number two. Now, I have seen a lot of contests do it differently. Some, um, some contests would have the, the uh, sergeant at arms in the breakout room with the contestant, waiting with the contestant, and then they would text each other to let them know that, hey, the contestant has has, the, uh, has finished, contestant number one has finished, you can send out um, contestant number two and contestant number two can come in here. And you can also, or you as a Zoom host can also send a broadcast message so that all the contestant knows that, oh, contestant one has finished, they're ready for the next contestant. 
So that's what you do with the inner breakup. All right. So when to use breakout rooms, contest master briefing, judges briefing is this. How will timers communicate timing information for, for yeah, okay. So another thing, now, when you are Zoom host, you want to, on, at the dry run, ask the chief judge what they prefer. A lot of the chief judges, sometimes they do things a bit differently. Sometimes they want the timers to communicate timing information to the ballot counters by using the, a private chat. Some of them wants to be taken to the breakout room. So you, you have to ask the chief judge how the chief judge wants to conduct their, their duty during the, uh, the dry run, okay? All right, this we talked about a little while ago. For these types of contests, typically the sergeant at arms number two would go into the breakout room with the contestant while they wait for the previous contestant to finish. All right. Ballot counter and counting. Yes. Again, same thing. Ask the chief judge how they want it done. Sometimes, again, they want, sometimes some of them want the, the ballot counters to be in the same room as all the judges. Sometimes they want them to send private uh, chats. I have been in in both and they work perfectly fine. Just know that a lot of times there is not just one way to do something, there are multiple ways to do something and it all depends on the preferences of some of the people that are running the contest. Yeah, so again, ask chief judge how they want to handle that protest. This is typically handled by the chief judge. And so you have to be attentive as far as what the chief judge wants to do. If there is a, a protest, the chief judge may want some of the judges to go back or they may want um, the spare judge. What, what do you call that other judge? The, the, uh, the tiebreaker judge to go into the room. So you have to be attentive on that. And the chief judge will provide instructions if there is a protest. Or, or this, if there is a disqualification. All right, these are the things that we talked about. All right, so we talked about all the features in the breakout. Now, breakout room is an area that a lot of people are not comfortable with, but now Zoom has made a lot of enhancements, so you can't go wrong now. <laughs> so it's not as, as, as frightful as before. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Desktop sharing, all right. So you notice that in your security button, all right, most of the time we don't allow people to share screen, but this time I've allowed people to share screen. And that's because you don't know who's gonna share screen or who's gonna click it uh, by accident. So, it is up to your preference to give certain people the ability to share screen, or you can make your life easier. For example, for contest master, you can make them a co-host, or you can make uh, the, the area director or the president or whoever is running the contest, you can help make, you can give them, make them a co-host as well so that they can share screen. Anytime you make somebody a co-host, they can script, share screen. Otherwise, if it's universal, you click that button that says security and you share screen for everyone. Now I have to um, venture to tell you, typically I, sh I let everyone share screen because most people are very quiet in the Toastmasters contest. And I've never had anyone who accidentally share screen. All right, so it's very safe. Most people know what to do to, to turn off their video and to put themselves on mute. But it's up to your discretion what you want to do. Uh, OK, when people share screen, um, there is also a feature, again, in the same button on your right hand, upper right hand side with the view to say, do you want to share the presentation side by side mode or whatever you want to do on that All right, video setting. 
the people who need to share screen are people who will be announcing the dignitary, for example, people who are doing participant certificates. So you have to coordinate. That is why dry run, again, is so important. You have to coordinate with the contest coordinator or the contest master and say, who's going to share screen, uh, to who's going to read the dignitary list, who is going to share the certificates, who is going to announce the winners, who is going to um, be sharing their screen. Then when they share screen, you might want to also ask them to share so that it's uh, show slide mode. All right, for example, it's like up here where you show the slide, slideshow mode, so that the entire screen is, is shown like this. So you might want to make sure that they, they do the, uh, use the slideshow mode so that, it, so that everyone in the contest can see their screen. And then you also have to make sure that there is someone in the contest who is sharing the brick timer. The brick timer is to count down, I forgot whether it's five, it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but it's the brick timer screen that they should be sharing where they, sh they it counts down the time. All right. You don't all, you don't have to be the person doing everything. Because I think with the, within the contest, with, within the uh, people who are do, coordinating the contest, they typically have someone who would share screen to, um, to, to show the break timer. Security functions. We talked about how to remove participants, how to move people to the waiting room, how to assign them to the waiting room. And then we talked about how to suspend participant activities using that security button. And then report user, there are also reports that you can generate behind the scene. If you have a Zoom account, you can generate reports to show who participated, who are the participants who came into your Zoom link, all right? And again, we talked about this, when a speaker is speaking in a contest, don't admit anyone to the contest, just let them know. You can chat, private chat them and say that, I, let them know a participant is speaking and that they'll be, they'll be let into the room when, that is, when the speaker is done. Uh, sending chat to the people in the waiting room, we talked about that. Sent broadcast messages to everyone, we talked about that as well. Yeah, we talked about this one as well, all right? There are also other places where you can always find more information if you want. And as far as signing up for a free zone account and practice, you can free free to do that. Or you can, you can also volunteer for one of the, some of the activities within the district and they will give you a Zoom account and you can also practice from there as well. Or better yet, you can volunteer to be a, a Zoom co-host. Then you can see the actual thing in action, the actual uh, event in action and be able to play, well, play with the buttons or get real life experience with the buttons. Do you guys have any questions? No, I, I really like that um, presentation. I'm sorry. Okay. Very helpful. A lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> and I am also going to share with you this cheat sheet that I created for myself. I, I want to share with you that when I started doing this in the year 2020, when everything went virtual, I was so scared. I was so afraid because I didn't want to do anything wrong. <laughs> Not in front of the whole you know, group of people. So I created my own cheat sheet, all right? This is only wow. a cheat sheet. It's, it's, um, it's for you to, okay, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I tell them this? Did I? By now, you may not need all of it, but I created this for myself. And you notice that it's, it's purely a reminder for myself because sometimes I don't remember what I've done, all right? And, and I have to remind myself to, that there are these people and that I need to make sure that they are, they are present during the dry run. I need to do something with them. 
See, I even have myself uh, scripts. <laughs> and and rem these are just reminder for myself that don't forget the trophies, you know. <laughs> anyway. That's a very, very good checklist. Yes. Are you going to put that in a... Are you going to put that in the chat for us? Can we, sure, can we sure. utilize that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure, but just just add to it because these, you notice that I, I'm no expert, but I certainly, uh, I'm willing to take a risk, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Uh, yeah. So th th that's my cheat sheet and you can feel free to write on it and and add to it because things do change, by the way. Yeah. All right. Anyone have any other questions? Did you say you're putting that no? in the chat? Yeah. yeah, I did. It's in there. Yeah, yeah he was it able is. to download it. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I see is. Oh, I'm sorry. It, uh, it might, it it, might it, be it, under it, pound M I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, because oh. I, I only sent it to Michelle. I don't know oh, why. There it, but... there it is. That's it. <laughs> see, I make mistakes too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I see it now. 